Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 17. I think I got it wrong last week. It was right in the in the thing, but I forgot what I said. It, it, we're here. We're here. <sighs> but gradually, <laughs> I'm so sick of this show. <laughs> I am over it. I don't know whether it's growth or this is the show is just it's just not good. I think the show is just not good because it's not it's not a but when I say growth, I don't I'm not saying like I've outgrown um, the show or or uh, or shows like it um, because I still reality TV is still a guilty pleasure. But. <clears throat> But this is this is this is piss poor content here. Piss poor. I am thoroughly disappointed. Um the only and not even that it's exciting or that it's good, you know, for them folk to be fighting, but the fact that that is the climax of the season and 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 it's and it's the very last episode and so everything up until that point was just what were we doing anyway let's get into the review <clears throat> wendy and i'm finna i'm my bullets are so short and concise i'm finna just read off the bullets <laughs> Wendy on the phone talking about her pilot, Karen and Ray. At the doctor's office, she's in good health. Ashley and Giselle are planning the fashion show for GNA. And NECA and Ike are at the family, uh, I mean, at the fertility doctor um, to collect uh, some semen. They're going to the bathroom so she can, you know, right quick. And um, she's telling him to hurry up. So I'm assuming she didn't even help. Um, hurry up. This isn't romantic at all. Um, they do the procedure. We're done. She's very mean to him. She's very mean. Um, Mia and Gordon, they go to therapy. Um, is anyone still considering divorce? Mia thought that she needed to part ways when things got a little hostile around the house. He emptied her bank accounts when she did that and I, I, down to zero, zero dollars in the account. Um, just because she sought legal advice, you know, from from um, a divorce attorney. They talk about their intimacy. Gordon thinks that it's been fine. Mia says otherwise. Um, he lacks uh, in the in the on the romantic side. Gordon, um, he feels like he's not getting romance either. She's always on social media. They hold hands and share a little little tender moment. They talk about their needs. Gordon, he's he's very positive, but it's just looking me be looking looking at him like, I'm divorcing your ass. This is strictly filming here. I don't know what you're talking about, but I got she it, she got one foot in, one foot out. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Candace, she sees Dr. Ken. She cries on his shoulder about one kids. Um She's having a little guilt about the choices she's made in life. You know, it, is this my fault? You know, I've I've chased the bag so many years, and now I want to have kids, and it's 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 a little challenging. Is it my fault? Um, as women, we have to just realize um, there are sacrifices to be made on both ends. On both ends, um, children do not stop your bag. You know, children, they don't, they don't stop the show. I mean, at least for me, they haven't. <laughs> like, it might slow you down a bit, you know, it might take you off the course just a tad and you have to, but, but you, it's up to you to keep your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, all of those things. It's, it's up to you to keep it right here. Keep it at the forefront and, and, and carry on. That's up to you. And so, yeah, you decided you wanted to, you know, do I, I'm I'm going I'm going to do all of the things and then have children. And so you have to take into consideration that if you do that, you know, time is not on our side. And so, again, 
<laughs> sacrifices both ends. And so, yeah, that I mean, Candace, Candace, she feels like her career is important, but she wants to be a mother. The ladies meet for drinks. Mia, um, she tells them that she had a meeting with the founder of Monarch Magazine. Um, they're going to do a cover shoot for the magazine. All of the ladies, except for Ineka, are invited to the to the shoot. Um, <laughs> Mia is shady. I mean, she we we don't really know her like that. <laughs> We don't know her like that, so no, nah, we don't need to put her in the magazine with the with the rest of the of the cast that have been on the television screen a couple of years, a few years now for 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 some of them. And so yeah, we just don't know enough about you. Sorry, girl. Um, they do they 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 do a fitting for for the spread. They're 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 doing um. Why does my mind keep saying reenactment? It is not a reenactment. <sighs> anyway, each of them are going to take on a a a, a character, a persona <laughs> of another Hollywood star. Um, so Candace, she's first. She's going to be Diana Ross. Um, Giselle is Beyonce. I was like, that's low hanging fruit. That whole thing she Beyonce. You thought you 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 you'll never. And I don't even go up for be like that. Like she like you know I like her, but I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a part of the Beehive. And so you still could never, girl. <laughs> anyway, um, Karen, she's Lena Horn. That was a good choice. Um, Ashley is going to do Dorothy Dandridge. I like that for her. Mia, Pam Greer. I wouldn't have chosen Pam Greer for Mia, but okay. Um, Wendy is Cheryl Lee Ralph. Um, Robin is Mariah. I wouldn't have gave Robin Mariah. That was kind of lazy. Like y'all couldn't have thought of nobody else <laughs> for Robin. <laughs> Not to not to say nothing about Mariah, but it's just like Robin giving Mariah. No, never. Get out of here. Anyway, um, Juan and Robin, they are looking for a space for her um franchise that she's opening, Glow 30. Um, they we were I think Juan asked what the budget is. She don't know. Um They're asking for, I think they said sixty, sixty eight thousand a year. Okay. Good for you, Robin. We're proud. We're so proud. Anyway, she calls. <laughs> she calls Giselle. Giselle is out of town. She is, um, I think, in she's in Atlanta with her father. Her father is dealing with some health issues, and he needed to have surgery. And so she's just calling to check in with her. Um, Giselle don't want to talk about. It. You know, producer producers ask her about it, and she say, I don't, "We'll talk about it later." Robin, tell us though. Um, her father has, I think he, is it, tum yeah, a brain, he has brain cancer or a brain tumor, something like that. Um, and so, yeah, she's, she's going through. I, I just don't understand Giselle and her lack of vulnerability. Like, what is wrong? Like, we have to unpack it. It's, it's, it's really unhealthy for you not to. Be met with emotion and say, okay, I'm going to just let it out. She's the type of person that will not. By in, by, will not. I'm not crying. I'm not being vulnerable. I'm not showing that. I'm not. Stone Cold Giselle Austin. <laughs> All day, every day. I don't understand it. Then you want to talk about your kids. And that's the only thing that you talk about. And you try to muster up a tear here and there. And it's still not believable. But that's all. That's the only time you want to be vulnerable is when you when you um, bring the children into the fold. When you talk about your girls. But you have a whole lot of stuff going on in your life. And we don't know anything about it. Your father is dealing with this. You could help somebody. You know, it could be some type of catharsis for you. I don't know, but you got to stop. 
completely blocking out emotion. I don't get it, lady. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's a little jarring for me. You Like, that was the time for you to, you know, have a little moment. You know, get the people on your side because we already don't like your ass. <sighs> anyway, I really hope that her father um, had a successful surgery and he is on the mend. I, I don't keep up with Giselle, so correct me if, if you know, there's anything going on to the contrary. Um, anyway, I want to move on. I want to move on. Um, Wendy, she shoots her pilot. They asking about the 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 budget for for the production and everything. And production ladies say I'm not really comfortable answering those questions. Girl, you on TV? You knew you was gonna be on TV. <laughs> I'm not comfortable answering those questions on camera. We talk about the budget over here, girl. You can say it. <laughs> it's not a secret secret. It's not a secret secret. They've exceeded the budget. Eddie wrote her a check for fifty k. So, I mean, I was like, okay. <laughs> I know that's right, Eddie. I know that's right. Um, the theme of the pilot is Black Girl Magic. She has a, she has some, some heavy hitters on, on her panel. She got April Ryan, um, Jasmine from the Jasmine brand, um, the Black Girls Vote founder, um, and Lindsey Granger. Wendy look, looked, looked it good. <laughs> That's funky Dineva would say. <laughs> she looked great. She looked amazing. Um, I also love the set. Listen, everything, the, the budget, money well spent. Money well spent. Ashley and Giselle, they're getting ready for their fashion show. Giselle, she is fresh off the plane. You can tell that she's just, you know, I got a film. Um, her father is in the hospital, so she's been back and forth. The decor in the place, I like it. I like it. I did. It made me feel like Miami. <laughs> um, Giselle, like I said, is visibly distracted, but she's going to press forward. Uh, the rest of the ladies start trickling in. Deborah, she there, and the music changes to get all <laughs> get all intense like a horror film. <laughs> she got a nerve to walk up to Wendy and try to, you know, oh hey, girl, you can just wave. Don't try to reach in for a hug. It's not even necessary. <laughs> um. Mia, she's having a release party for the for the photo shoot that they had. Um, she lets them know that they start the show. The pieces look cheap as fuck. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Nothing looks like you can work out in. One of the pieces, Wendy notices, wait a minute, that looked like something I wore when they was telling me I was out here looking like a hoe. When they was talking about the fashions, now look at it in your in your fashion show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, them pieces are trash. Don't nobody want it. Um, it was it was way worse than than she by Sheree. Way worse. I what what was it? Who working out in the capes, the hooded capes? Who doing it? Anyway. Um, all is well. The people are partying. They rap filming. The mics are still on, however. Deborah roll up on Candace. Candace, is there anything that we need to talk about? Candace says, absolutely not. Deborah says, I want to know, like, he was calling me Sesame Street character and all of that, and, like, I'm here now. Girl, what? I'm here. What? Who? What? <laughs> Deborah's, I mean, Candace say, no, Kiana says, that she steps in and says, this isn't the time or the place for none of this. And so that's how, I'm, we seeing how Kiana got into the fold to beat that ass. And we are, we, we, we stand, okay, Kiana? Because somebody had to do it. I'm sorry it had to be you and you know that's probably your exit, but I mean, right on. <laughs> um... Deborah, because she's still, she's still, you know, doing a, doing a bit of this. You, you saying it, but you ain't saying it to my face. And da, 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 da. And this is when she's yanked up. She is yanked up. We can hear it in the mic. <laughs> to be continued. 
to be continued. This is when we get to the good part. And I feel like we could have skipped to the good part. Anyway. That's it, guys. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.